So this is the Opel Grandland X 2020. And although I kind of dismissed the older Grandland X, this is really good. And I'm gonna find out why this is so good right now. Right, let's find out about the exterior first before we go any further. So it hasn't really changed much from Grandland X. You know, you'd still recognize it as an Opel, even though it's got Peugeot 3008 parts in it, for sure. Things I don't like, and this is very modern cars do this a lot. So if you look in here, you can see the little rust marks in on the brake pads and this. Uh, hybrid four written on the side, because it is actually four wheel drive. Exterior side on, I like it. Love that color scheme. The black roof, nice uh, draped line down here. This is actually a tinchy little window that is right there. Uh, this is the fuel side, <laughs> petrol side, which just open. You have to go over there and press the button, but the other side with the electric does open. Uh, the rear end is actually quite nice as well. Hybrid forward on the back, Grand Land X. Look in the boot, it's actually electric, really slow but opens and that's all that really matters. I actually have my scooter with me today, my electric scooter in here today, so I'm all electric today. Uh, a good boot. There is shopping bag hooks, there's lights, there's everything else in here. No LED lights, funny enough, but lights are the same. And then you have two buttons on the back to close it, so this one and this one, because you can wave your, your foot underneath, which I'll do and demonstrate, it's not working. This is what happens to you in a car park. You, there it goes, you wave your foot for 15 minutes, then eventually it slowly drops. So yes, I just closed that with my foot. Okay, interior. This is where it really does change from the Peugeot version of it because in here I have a full-size steering wheel. <laughs> Look at the size of it, I love you. Normal steering wheels are, are the king, I promise you. Once you've used the small steering wheel for a while, you get to realize why the big steering wheel is better. Now, uh, also in here, it, it looks, I've got manual, Nice manual knobs and things that are here. Look at all the air conditioning knobs. You got no this one actually opens a fuel cap outside and sometimes it doesn't work. It's really, really weird, but yeah. You can actually time your um, uh, heater to come on as well because it's a PHEV. So you got a battery system in here that's able to heat the cabin before he's all come out. This has heated and cooled seats, both, which is vital the other day and the heated bit was vital this morning. So it was actually brilliant. Now, touch and plastics are all good. They're good, soft, squidgy things. Look, it's squidgy. Uh, so it's quite nice. And across here, and then we have a glove box, which is might as well not be there, Opal. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's not a glove box. You wouldn't even get gloves in there. Look, there's a manual in there. And that's it. That's the whole glove box. Fuse box right in the middle of it. Why is this here? That's insane. Could I put that somewhere else? Come on. You might as well not have it there. Just close that off and forget about it. Useless. Anyway, turn it on. And I say turning it on because realistically, you just kind of switch on car. Don't. The petrol engine cut in for the first time in three days. That's because I've nearly run it out. I think it's just heating itself up a little bit. It'll shut off in a second. But literally, I've run this car for the last three days on pure electricity. I've driven the kids to school and home again back and forward to the shops and stuff, charged it up in the afternoon, a little kind of burst of maybe two hours, two and a half hours on a 7.4, gave it a full charge again. Lovely yoke. And just to prove the point, my fuel economy is 2.6 litres per 100 kilometres. 2.6. Think about that for a minute. That's it. That's all. Now, I could have got that less, but I actually drove this car from Dublin to, to Port Leash. Uh, on the motorway at 120, I just turned it on and left it go and I got here. So I actually used that much petrol since I got it. Look at the fuel tank. <laughs> None. <laughs> Which is gas, just to think of how efficient this car is. It really is. Now also there, the engine shut off again because I've got 10 kilometers of range left. You can actually uh, get into the system here and, and turn it on. So it, it's got e-save. See e-save here? So you can reserve energy. So if you're going to be out in the motorway, you turn on e-save and you can save like 20 kilometers for the other end, uh, which allows the car to run on the petrol engine and it just it charges up the battery enough to give you 20 kilometers range on the other end. So if you're going into a congestion area, you're going into a low CO2 area or whatever, that's there for you, you know, it's already turned on, really good. Now you see that the 
heaters are all still on and my, my heated and cooled seats are all still, if I want them on, right, there's heated and there's cooled. Nice, isn't it? Really good. I really like this car. It's really, really nice. Uh, sat nav interface and that sort of stuff runs Apple CarPlay. No bother. Everything seems to work inside it. So if we go back here, you can see that I have uh, connectivity, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So you can see the two of them are turned on here. If we go into Apple CarPlay, I've updated to iOS 14. So some of the stuff you're looking at in here is slightly different from what you will see on your screen because this is the latest version of, of Apple CarPlay that's running. Uh, and I have to say, I have no complaints with iOS 14 so far. Um, that doesn't mean I won't get complaints, but right now I have no complaints whatsoever. It works, in, it seems to work perfectly. Also, you see the background has changed, but also in here I have my beautiful people who look after this channel and give us the best chance of survival. This is Noah. Noah in the app here allows you to be able to play through Apple CarPlay everything that is on the system. So you can see what does Putin want from Belarus. So you can see here it goes into Vladimir Putin. You can go through all of what Russia really has in mind and you can see where they're coming from as well. So that's the UK one there, Russian propping up uh, this system. So if I click in here, you can see from the independent, uh, then you have this screen here, which you can just do that and start to play. It works perfectly with Apple CarPlay. Now, why am I mentioning that? It's because they sponsored this channel, uh, they sponsored this video as well. So if you want to get 50% off using Noah for a year, it's only gonna be 60 euro to you. There's a link in the description down below. Like I say, you have 50% discount on Noah. It's in the link down below, or you can go to newsoveraudio.com and put in the code FLAVEN and still get 50% off. So share that with your friends, share it with everybody, it's fine. So everything else you can see in here, actually Webex, funny, has come up in here as well. Google Maps, Zoom is in there too, Spotify, they're all back in where they should be, and that is your, you can see here that News Over Audio actually sits in there, see it there? It sits in as a little thing in your home screen. And I'm supposed to pick up a set lay on today, which is why that one's appeared there as well. It is super cool, works perfectly. If you go into the nav system on the machine itself, on the car itself, you can actually use the nav system in that as well. So that's here too. Besides that, so you can go to menu, you can destinations, it's all in there as well. Audio, and then you can go back in here where you can have car apps, which allows you to go into the energy system. You can see what's happening here. So your charge is there, statistics is here. You can see how efficient it's been. Look how much fuel, look at the fuel, and look at the electricity. <laughs> look at the two of them, look. That's electricity, that's the fuel. Uh, that's statistics for now, anyway. I don't think you can go up or down that way. And then the flow itself is where it's pulling this energy from. I haven't charged it. I forgot to charge it last night, but I wasn't really worried about it today because I'm driving to Dublin today and I have a petrol engine to back it up. But anyway, you get about 40 kilometers or so, 40, 50 kilometers from the electric engine. Uh, and if you're a motor, if you're um, really trying hard, you will get the full 50 if you really take it easy. And this is a big car. So let's not forget how big this car is. This isn't a small little electric car or even a crap car to drive. It's actually good to drive. We'll get to the drive in a minute. Let's have a quick look at the back seat and see how practical it is for the family. Back door opens nice and wide, so you've no problem with that, parents. Get your little kids in here. That seat is set for a very relaxed me. No problem with the distance between the knees. Uh, I have one, curiously, USB port. That's it. One in the middle. There's two vents back here, no way of controlling them. And then I have good pockets on both sides. And there is actually a 220 volt socket in this as well. Now, this is where things get a little bit confusing. That's actually, I can barely get in at it, but that's a three pin plug back there. So if you want to run your hair dryer or whatever it is, there you go, there's a plug for it. An actual full size three pin plug in the back of your car. I'm not sure how much use that would be, but then it's better to be looking at it than looking for it, right? So I have an armrest in the middle with two cup holders in, it's pretty good. And I have actually got a loader through, which is quite nice because it's not dropping. The armrest is still there. You know, you can still see into the boot there. And you can have your long object through the car, which is pretty good. And then lowering the seats over here is just a click. It is a 60, 60, 40. The headrest is up on that side, so it's not dropping down there. There it goes. Now, it's not flat. It's quite a ramp actually on the way up through it, but I don't know if that would bother me too much, depending on what you're carrying. It's nicer to see a flat floor, but it's also nice to be comfortable in the back. Now, you see that there? Trapped, look. That's always a pain, that is, you know that? Because that, when the kids are getting into the car then, you have to do this to pull the seatbelt out from behind it. Now, it's back in the right place. Anyway, that's just one of those little things that kind of aggravates me about cars. 
Uh, other than that, it's kind of dark back here. If I close the door, you can see kind of how dark it is. These windows are tinted. So it's a little bit dark, but it's actually a comfortable place to be. I have plenty of room between me and the roof and all. No problem at all. Right, let's go for a spin. A quick word on prices and specs here. The Grand An X starts at 29,695, and the hybrid version starts at 35,950, inclusive of grants. There are three models, and the one in the film is the Elite 1.6 petrol hybrid with a combined output of 300 horsepower. You can also have a 1.2 petrol and a 1.5 diesel, so there's plenty of options with this car. The price of the car tested is around 54,000 euro, depending on the options you choose. One thing you don't realize in the Grand Annex is how big it is. Like that camera is a very long way from me. Like there's put so much room in the car. It's a big car. Starting it up, obviously it's silent when it's charged and it's got power in it. It's a little bit low on power right now because I was, I was charging it every day and ran it for three days with no uh, petrol being used at all. But I've, um, I was running around with the kids this morning so I've only eight kilometers range in it. But fortunately enough, you can actually charge it up as you drive. So you just go into the energy thing, you go to e-save and you press on, and then it starts to run the petrol engine to charge the batteries. Now, that's not efficient, but if you want to travel across long distances uh, and you're going to be going at motorway speeds anyway, you might as well be charging the battery while you're doing it. So you take it out of hybrid into that, uh, and that means you'll be charging the car as you drive, as you can hear right now. But I'm gonna go back out of that again, because I have actually got eight kilometers range, and I'm going to use the eight kilometers around the town where you should be using it. The 1.6 liter engine puts out 200 horsepower on its own. When you combine the two motors, you'll get 300 horsepower. When you, it feels so urgent as an engine, particularly when it's in hybrid mode and it pulls in the electric motor. when you put your foot down the whole lot cuts in and everything comes alive and then for the next little while after the car seems to go right you want to be sporty right i'm going to keep the engine running for a little bit and you keep it sporty so it's, it's actually quite nice on my dash as well i have a power reserve meter instead of a um instead of a rev counter so power reserve tells me right now i'm in eco mode i'm using less about 10 percent of my available power i like it very rolls royce that to have a power reserve meter. Uh, fuel economy, like I said, around is 2.7 liters per 100 kilometers. That is mostly town driving, which is what you do in Ireland. Essentially, that's what you're at in Ireland all the time, is town driving, you know? Um, you're either gonna drive in a city or you're gonna drive in a town. Now, if you're out in the countryside, I get it, you know, when you go very far north into sort of Donegal area, you are going to be going much further than that. But um, it's generally kind of low speed stuff we do a lot of in Ireland. It's a grey, foggy sort of day, but it actually is, according to the forecast on my phone, it says it's going to be really sunny later on. I hope it is, I really do. Because we had lovely sun yesterday and I managed to get a bit of a tan. Trundling about in the Grand Ant X is actually a lovely experience. They've really, really sorted out this car. It wasn't great. When it came out first, nobody really knew what it was, the Grand Ant X, and then it's like, what is this? Like, what does it do? But Really, uh, right now, this can be a four-wheel drive as well, by the way. This is the other point of this car is if you buy it in the right spec, you get a four-wheel drive version of it. And that means you can engage the motor at the back and the wheels at the front to get you out of trouble. Now, I've done that overseas. I've done it in a Peugeot, not in a Noble, but I've done it uh, in a Peugeot on an off-road kind of course, and it was actually pretty good. It actually did drag you out of the dirt very quickly. So you get good torque and acceleration out of roundabout stuff. It's quite nice, it really is. <laughs> so cool. Now the advantage bit here is, of course, you can use charge points. So if you want to, you can pull out your little ESB card, which this is here, and you can access the charge points that are around the town. So it charges from a standard Type 2. Uh, you just plug it in, it'll charge at lower speeds. So you're not gonna be able to charge at 22 kilowatt, as far as I'm aware may change in some markets it might change with some specs but essentially you can charge at the standard sort of 7.4 kilowatts at anything uh, at any charge point so it charges up in about two hours to full charge so I, I got full now it wasn't quite empty either but i filled it back up to absolute capacity in two hours at my home charger uh, which is ev box so my charger at home is ev box put in by desmond hair from Hair electrical 
uh, and he did a great job so that works for me every single time I've never had a problem with it um, and it charged this thing really quickly so what's not to like really not a lot if I'm honest if I'm honest it's very hard to fault this car it's just a nice place to be I suppose there's, there's a little struggle on the motorway speeds but I would expect that from any 1.2 so I would expect that from any small car that comes with a 1.2 litre petrol engine there'd be no different in this at all turning a bit of a pea soup out here now behind Dennis Eagle as we drive along through a cloud we're in the clouds of course uh, Port Leash is kind of uh, on one side has a lot of bog area so you end up in, in uh, a soupy sort of fog here every once in a while particularly in the morning this will burn off and it'll turn into a gorgeous day for me to go swap cars on my little electric scooter sorry Eamon Ryan but I do like electric scooters and they do work very well we need to legislate for them very soon uh, this is another company that should have an electric scooter in the boot anyway just as the final mile sort of thing and anyway, we've got the motorway and we see what it's like now the Apple CarPlay and all that sort of stuff that works perfectly well in this car it's very very good very accurate USB port is conveniently kind of tucked back into a, a little box there so you can put your phone into the box now I have an iPhone 10 and it doesn't quite fit in the box when the plug is in it so that's the problem when you make an area for something to fit into and it doesn't fit you've got a problem straight away so here I am out at 100 kilometers an hour it still hasn't engaged the petrol engine yet uh, it just heard it come on there a second ago as we start to increase our speed now I'm moving up to 120 and out into the overtaking lane and I'm going to engage the cruise control here uh, which is that I think it is cruise active yeah 120 kilometers an hour now this is the car at 120 petrol engine is running um, it's running on hybrid I have six kilometers left of hybrid range if I wanted that and the car will begin to charge the battery now as well because the petrol engine is running so it will do uh, flow it's using the petrol engine right now to run the car so if I go into e save and turn it on what it'll do is charge the battery while I'm doing my journey now so when I drive along the car will now begin to charge the battery it's using its excess energy to charge the battery up really clever I think it's very efficient that's the same in all PHEVs I don't think that's just like an Opel thing or whatever it's actually very efficient now it is a little bit inclement out here today so my visibility has gone down now so I'm going to slow a little bit because I've moved into a little fog area here. I'm going to make sure my headlights are on and I'm going to just drop my speed a small bit because restricted visibility means I can only see about maybe two to three hundred meters in front of me although I can see a truck in the distance now so that's that's pretty good I'm okay I can see it again now so I'm going to bring my speeds back up to normal as I can see perfectly well see driving you have to be active when you're driving so to sum up the Grandland X I actually think it's a really really honestly good car I think it's the first Opel that's come along in a long time that I really like particularly over the Peugeot version of it the full size steering wheel is absolutely adorable those knobs and buttons in there is really nice it's an insanely comfortable car okay price is a bit on the high side when you're talking 50 grand for a nice one of these it's a little on the pricey side but I think every car is getting really expensive at the moment and I've said this for a long time cars are expensive now uh, there's no kind of good honest cheap car anymore so it's they're all much of a muchness but this is just very nice it's a lovely place a lovely cabin and a nice place to sit I strongly advise you to have a go on it Opel seems to have changed their brand a good bit now into something very cool very nice thank you very much for watching please support the NOAA app down below they support us very well uh, there's a list of links down below you can get 50% off the NOAA app there you can also support the channel directly if you want to through PayPal Patreon and uh, uh, there's super chats on the Sunday service there is we do a live stream every Sunday service you can find me on TikTok uh, there's nearly 40,000 strong on TikTok now it's mad uh, also on Twitter and on Facebook and Instagram and all the usual kind of places if you just Google Bob Flavin you'll find me there pretty much Thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, I will see you on the far side of this fog.